Somebody say, I'm anointed. You know, all these things they say, ah, tomorrow is pregnant. That you should be careful, though. You don't know what might happen tomorrow. I know what will happen tomorrow. Victory. Victory. Faith is at work in me. The anointing of God is upon my life. There is nothing the devil can do about it. Victory. Don't you ever say, I know what will happen to me tomorrow. Victory. 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 Let me give you two scriptures of ah, look at 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 19. Let me let me show you something about the anointing that men like David understood. That was why David, once he gets directions from God in any battle, David entered battles. I will show you from scriptures with pleasure. David gets excited whenever he goes to fight. You know, all this I pray that. You know, I pray that God will save me today. You know, Lord, please yeah, cover my back while I'm fighting. And you go in there with, you know, hoping and wishing. Yeah. David entered any battle with pleasure. Glee, excitement. <laughs> because he knows as long as there is an anointing upon your life, the enemy cannot prevail over you. He said, because... Our rock is not their rock. That is why they will always prevail. <laughs> because that rock has a way of releasing oil. Am I communicating? So look at it. Saul, who was once anointed, the anointing lifted and a demon was sent to him to torment him. So Saul died in the battle. Saul did what? died in the battle as far as these men were concerned it was an abomination a man was anointed Satan came in died in the battle so David began to lament his death he said the beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places how are the mighty fallen now all these things are names they give to anointed people beauty of because the anointing is attractive <laughs> mighty because it makes you do mighty things weaklings don't do mighty things mighty men do mighty things and they do it by virtue of the might of God the anointing that comes upon them continue verse 20 tell it not in God it's an abomination. Publish it not in the streets of Ascalon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Continue. Ye mountains of Gibor, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. The man cursed a mountain because one that used to be anointed died on it. It was an abomination. Neither let there be rain upon you nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. He lost it. That thing that shields a man's life, the glory of God, the anointing, was cast away. Watch. The shield of Saul. He wasn't talking about the physical shield. The shield of Saul, watch, as though he had not been anointed with oil. This man died as though there was no anointing on him. And indeed there was none. There used to be. It was vilely cast away. So he was naked. He was exposed any fiery dart could penetrate. See, the guy died as though he was never. In other words, what David was actually saying is if the shield of Saul was intact, 
the anointing of King Saul was still there. There was no way he could have died on the mountain of Gilboa. Lift your right hand and say, with me, Father, anoint me today with supernatural power to enable me serve you acceptably. And this is my defense in the name of Jesus Christ. I think I should show you maybe two more again. Um, this is David. Remember before he killed Goliath, Prophet Samuel came over to David's house to anoint. You all know the story. The brothers stood out there and they were waiting for the thing to touch their head like it would touch your head tonight. Yeah. And you know, God rejected all of them until finally they now remembered. David was a man living in a home where he was forgotten. And they remember that he was out there. So they went out there and brought him in. And he was anointed with oil. After that anointing service, <laughs> David went to visit his brothers. And he saw Goliath threatening. The opposite of what was going on in the brother's heart and in the hearts of all the soldiers was happening in his own heart. They were afraid. David was angry. When the anointing comes upon you and anybody begins to talk nonsense about your God, fire, anger, wells up in you. I feel like they could date in such a person. The guy got angry. The first question was this. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Anointing. It's a weapon of war. If you're anointed, somebody by your side is saying nonsense about Jesus, nonsense about the bride of Christ, and you are smiling. You don't have oil. You are a reproach. Talking bad against what God is doing. How I know you are anointed. Is what comes out of your mouth. They are kingdom oriented. Kingdom. Anointed men. Their words are so heavy. They don't have time for light words like gossip. Slander. No. They speak words of conviction. Con conviction is heavy. Gossip is light. Men without substance. It don't happen again, no. When you are anointed, you understand the value of words. One of the one of the characteristics of this thing called the anointing. When when you are sent on a on a mission, usually Jesus will tell them, say nothing to anybody. Don't waste it. Because the more you speak vile nonsense, greetings, how on that day? <laughs> what multiplies the anointing? Is when you are preaching the gospel. That's the only words allowed to be to be communicated when you are under the anointing. It enhances the anointing. Talking about your sister-in-law and your brother-in-law having fasted for seven days is putting holes on your vessel. Everything leaks. Talking nonsense. <laughs> 